Cape Cod Broadcasting weaves the listening environments of 99.9 WQRC, Ocean 104.7, WFCC Classical 107.5, Cape Country 104, and CapeCon.com's website experience to reflect the lifestyles of the people who live, work, and play on Cape Cod. We hope that you enjoy this podcast. Good morning, I'm Rob Woodard. This is Sunday Journal. Today I'm joined by Captain Thomas Bushy, Vice President of Marine Operations at the Mass Maritime Academy, and he's also the captain of the T.S. Kennedy, the Academy's training ship. Also joining us are Taylor Inkley and Katie Rastalis. They are both cadets at Mass Maritime. The three of them just returned from the Academy's annual sea term, a 28-day cruise where the students are responsible for all aspects of maritime life during the trip. Thanks for joining me today. Good to have you all here. Welcome home. Thank you. Thank you. Well, glad to be here. Uh, Captain Bushy, can you tell me how long you've been the master of the Kennedy? Just finished my 18th trip. Okay. So have you been – so for 18 years, you've made every every trip every year? Yes, sir. Wow. Can you tell me um, about the history of the vessel and some of the main teaching tools and features of the, of the ship? Well, the Kennedy was uh, built in 1967 in Avondale Shipyards as the Velma Likes, a cargo ship. Uh, went in service uh, for about – almost 20 years, then went into government ownership, uh, was into a reserve fleet status, and then we needed the training ship. So that ship was selected, went through a, a conversion in 2001 until 2003, and was delivered to us. Uh, we made our first training ship, training voyage on Kennedy in 2004. And what were you using prior to the acquisition of the Kennedy? Oh, back in the 80s, we had a ship called the Patriot State, and then she was declared unseaworthy. She had some rust issues in her hull, so we had to borrow the New York Maritime ship Empire State for five okay. years. Okay, yeah. Um, in, in sea term, can you tell me what it is and what it's designed to do? Well, we go on an annual sea term every year. It's 52 days, uh, usually the months of January and February. Uh, training crews is critically important to our overall uh, sea time and curriculum needs for the training the students studying marine transportation and marine engineering but it also is an important component of the freshman common freshman year we call it at the academy where all the freshmen do a common first semester and then they do the sea term so it's a it's a um, it's a team building concept it's also very educational uh, gives them some cultural awareness of international relations uh, I think the cadets could do better on that than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's, is, is the ship entirely run by freshmen, or, or do you have a variety of uh, classes aboard? Well, no, we have, a, you know, we have a ship's crew, a documented ship's crew that meets the requirements of the United States Coast Guard. Uh, but the cadets, uh, the cadets we take are first class, third class, and fourth class. Uh, Taylor is the first class regimental commander, so he was the top cadet on board this year. So first class being the seniors in regular college and the fourth, fourth class being the freshmen. That's correct. Okay. Katie's a freshman or a fourth classman. The, uh, but the cadets, I mean, they do, all the, they do all the leadership responsibilities for the cadet regiment of cadets. Uh, they fulfill a lot of very important roles in the operation of the ship. And they, they essentially operate the ship, but always under the watchful eye of a licensed officer. Sure. And how many students go each year? This year we left with 600. Wow. And uh, is this a voluntary thing, or it's mandatory, or how does that work? Well, it's mandatory for the curriculum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, uh, for example, uh, Taylor's studying a, a major that's not required to do three training cruises. So he, mm -hmm. he essentially was a volunteer this cruise. Katie had no choice. She had to go. <laughs> um, so you can go more than once. Once you go, the, once you go your freshman year, you, you're still eligible to go uh, subsequent years. Only if you're studying marine transportation and marine engineering. Okay. And so what were this year's ports of call? Oh, Curacao. Um, you guys can Barbados, chip in if you want. Cartagena, Colombia. We anchored in Mayaguez, Puerto Rico, and off Haiti. So we essentially were at four, six different locations. In Miami, Florida, six different locations. Okay. How do you decide each year where you're going to go? We have a thing called the Sea Term Council. Uh, we'll start it up in April, and we'll kick around the idea of different ports, what area of the globe we want to go to, usually the Caribbean. Uh, the cadets always have grand ideas about where they're going to go, and then we <laughs> remind them that the, there's no docks there, right. there's no tugboats. And so it, it's, it's kind of a, a democratic solution, selection process. But then, of course, we have to turn around and, and go to the vessel owner, the Maritime Administration, to get final approval on the ports we've selected. Okay. Um, and so I know that the cadets are responsible for all the areas of shipboard life. Um, ladies first, Katie, what was your, what was your job on the ship? Um, well, I was fourth class, so we don't have 
too much responsibility. We don't really know what we're doing yet. Um, mostly my job was to take classes. I had to take classes in all of the academy's majors. Um, so EM, facil- or uh, engineering, transportation, uh, business, and what was the last one? Marine safety and environmental protection. Yeah. Okay. Uh, marine safety and environmental protection. So my job is really to learn what I want to be doing for the rest of my life. Right. Um, and I also had to help take care of the ship. So whereas the seniors would be doing the navigation and taking care of the engine room, I was taking care of the actual ship cleaning and scullery, right, washing the, dishes. The grunt work yes. for the freshmen. <laughs> well, you know, that makes sense. Um, and so when you weren't in class, how, how many hours a day were you actually in class? We were in class from... Eight to four every day. Okay, and so four o'clock comes along, and do you have to immediately report to to your job, or do you have some time um, off? We had every morning, every night. We have um, you either have inspections or turn two, which is cleaning, or um, hold cleaning. Hold is where you sleep on the ship. Um, so you get like an hour and a half off after classes, and then you have to go to uh, one of those, and after that, you're free for the night. For fourth class, anyway, I know the seniors have a lot of responsibility that they right. have to. Well, unless take you're care assigned of. watch that night. Yeah, unless you have watch that night, then you have a uh, four hours on, eight hours off. Oh, right. right. So this is not a uh, this is a this is a hard working cruise. Yes. It's, yeah, a uh, cruise may be the wrong word for it. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, Taylor, as a senior, um, I would imagine that you're in the casino with a daiquiri in your hand while the while the freshmen are working and cleaning everything. Yes, they catered <laughs> all my needs. It's uh, quite great, I must say. Good. Um, what were you, so? What were your uh, duties on the ship? So on the ship, I go on sea term as the cruise commander. So with this position, I work with division leaders, the cadet chief mate, and the cadet chief engineer. We split all the students that go on the sea term into three divisions, Mm -hmm. and each division has two division leaders. One's a marine transportation major, and the other's a marine engineer major, so they can cover all of the students, I guess you could say. And I'll work closely with them just to go over a lot of planning, um, ensure they have all the resources they have, and that they're prepared for the next day to come, and that they can accomplish all of the training, the maintenance schedules, any kind of changes in the schedule, any kind of hiccups and problems, they can come to me and I can um, kind of be the liaison between the administration and the students and, you know, provide them with what it is that they need. So as the as the senior um, cadet on the vessel, it seems as though that's a lot of responsibility. Was it maybe a little stressful as well? Yes, it's definitely, I mean, uh, a great learning experience with that leadership position. Um, you know, because if, you know, the things need to go certain ways, and if they don't, I hear about it. So, you know, it's a great learning experience. It can get stressful at times, especially when we do um, the boat drills and emergency drills, things of that nature. But overall, it's, um, you know, I know that the uh, administration there, you know, they're there to help us learn and, you sure. know, everything. So it's, they have, we have their support. Right. So you hear, nice. you hear about any issues from the cadets, and then you hear about issues from the administration. So you're kind of in the middle there, so you can... Yeah, you're, get, you're getting it from both sides, obviously. So tell me about a typical day at, at sea term or during sea term for you. What, you know, what is your responsibility each day? Obviously, they vary per mm-hmm. day or every day. Um, take me through a, a typical day. So a typical day for me would uh, consist of, I'd wake up around 6.30 and I would have a... 6.30? <laughs> Reveille goes at 6. Reveille uh, goes at 6. I just uh, found something out. <laughs> I'm in trouble now. <laughs> Um, I'd have a meeting at 7 o'clock every morning with the uh, commandant staff. That's the um, commandant staff is the administration that looks over the regiment of cadets, so it's another word for administration, if you if you will, I mm-hmm. guess you could say. Um, so I'd have a meeting at 07 with them and would go over the day schedule, um, any kind of any particular tasks would have, any kind of changes or things we really need to focus on, things we need to improve on for that day that we need to get to the cadets. And then afterwards, from there, we'd have our morning formation. This is for all of the students. That's at 7.45. And at morning formation, from here, we'll dismiss students to either maintenance, training, or watch. And then, so after they get dismissed from there, I'll be working with, so so there's some, I'll have a lot of, I was doing a lot of tasks, I guess, to plan ahead for this semester. Mm-hmm. Like maintenance semester. tasks and things like that? or um, For me, it was I was doing more of maybe behind-the-scenes type of like administrative paperwork. Because like, I know we're making a lot of big changes this year. That are, not big changes, but some changes at our school mm-hmm. that the students are working on. So I was involved with planning that stuff. Um, 
I was also involved with, you know, if we have an issue on board, like, um, I guess a good example would be, like, um, how clean the holds are kept because, uh, right. you know, we have about 80 18 year old kids yeah. and, you know, cadets living in a room together. I so. have one 18 year old living in a room by himself, and I can imagine when you have uh, a. <laughs> exactly. Many. So that, that was an endless battle there. So yeah. we'd come up with, you know, brainstorm some ideas, see what we can do to uh, improve those conditions. Um, did you spend any time on the bridge um, actually you know, plotting courses or, or doing anything involved with the actual um, progress of the ship as it made its way? For myself, since I'm not a marine transportation major. I uh, wasn't involved with any of the plotting or the navigation, but the, the, the senior officers who do, you know, the marine transportation major, right? they're involved with, you know, navigating the ship. I know the deck majors, they have a part of their training they receive is uh, celestial navigation. So instead of using uh, GPS systems and things of that mm -hmm. nature, they use a, uh, what's called a sextant. Right. And they can determine their global positioning just by looking at the stars and through some calculations and right. the sun positioning and I've never I didn't learn it myself but it's right they it's all so, get pretty stressed out so it depends on what each person's uh, particular specialty is or whatever they're studying um, at the academy captain can you tell me about the the what is the physical size of the ship Be before I answer that sure. Rob, can I point out that Taylor's being awful uh, uh, humble here he also was the voice of the ship for the follow of the voyage Ah. So if any of the parents or friends of the academy were following our progress, uh, each morning there's a captain's log written by me, but there's also a feature article written almost every day, and in his spare time he did that. Oh, uh, yeah. So Sounds he, like he had a lot of spare time. doing quite a bit of work. So. Right. Okay, Kennedy's uh, 540 feet long, okay. 76 feet wide, deep draft about 28 feet. Uh, we carry we make 15,500 horsepower through a steam turbine. We carry about 12,000 barrels of fuel. Uh, and three five hundred and seventy tons of fresh water, and sixteen thousand rolls of toilet paper, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many of those come back? <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't care how many rolls of toilet paper come back. We worry about cadets and crew. Um, it's, that's that's kind of uh, where I wanted to go next, Katie. So tell me about the living conditions aboard the ship. You're you're all in one massive room, or how does that work? Well, all the girls on the ship um, were in the same room. So there are 60 girls in the same room. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. You know, everyone thinks that many girls in one small area are going to have some drama. Right. It wasn't bad. Um, and then, I mean, 540 feet of ship is, it's a good-sized ship, but it's not that big. So you're always with everyone on the ship. Right. You get to know everyone really well. Um, it's, I've always been told, like, Mass Maritime's where you make friends for life, and Sea Term is where that happens. Right. It's it was awesome. So, so, so all of you girls would obviously you'd kind of have to look out for one another. Like if somebody's not pulling their weight with regard to keeping the area clean, you kind of work as a team to encourage that. Yeah, that. Um, definitely. We had to encourage to help clean. Uh, it's something that back on land we have inspections every morning, so it's something we're definitely used to having to keep everything clean. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's used to having to pull their own weight, and if someone's not, we are used to giving them a little push to right. get them to go in that you direction. politely get their attention, yes. I would imagine. I'm Rob Woodard. This is Sunday Journal. Today I'm joined by Captain Thomas Bushy. He's Vice President of Marine Operations at the Mass Maritime Academy. He's also Captain of the Training Ship Kennedy. That's the Academy's training ship. Also joining me are Taylor Inkley and uh, Katie Rast Rastalis, and uh, they are cadets at Mass Maritime. We're discussing Sea Term, from which they all just returned. So, um, Katie, back to you. What's the food like on the ship? Um, oh, I'm a vegetarian, so <laughs> there wasn't, it, it was good for being out at sea. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm not it's, sure. It's, what does that mean? A lot of the, f the food is going to be frozen. It's the best right. way to keep food on the ship. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be eating rotten food after a week. Right. So it's, they did what they could with frozen food. Okay. Which is, I mean, it's the best way to put it. I think. <laughs> That's a sterling endorsement. <laughs> um, so, Taylor, tell me, um, what was the hardest thing on Sea Term for you? The most difficult thing for me on Sea Term is it's um, it's working with like my contemporaries or the other senior class members because mm -hmm. uh, being in a position of leadership, you know, we have to enforce you know the rules and regulations of the academy. So it's you know it's easier when I'm working with freshmen, you know, they're. You know, it's easier because they're younger. You know, it's a little different roles being played. But, you know, when I'm working with my, you know, the same seniors, the students I've gone through the past four years with, and, you know, I'm 
correcting them on certain issues. That's the most difficult part, um, you know, that I experienced the C term. Right. And so, um, when, let's say when you get into uh, into a port, what do you do? You, are you allowed to leave the the ship? So it works as um, we have three days. Uh, that will be in a port in each division will get two days of liberty Mm -hmm. so on those two days that you don't have any responsibilities to the ship you're allowed to go off do some adventures uh you know, make your own story. So, mm-hmm. and are you, obviously, you're required back to the ship at a certain time so they can make sure everybody's accounted for. And yes, exactly. Right. All, all of the classes have certain curfew times. They have to report back by. Okay, Katie. Any particular adventure you'd like to share? Um, I don't know if there's any particular adventure, but getting off the ship and being able to explore the ports was amazing. I mean, even just going to the beach, it's completely different from the beaches on Cape right. Cod. You know, the water's warm. It's much saltier. Um, it's, and then being there with all your friends from the ship and everyone that you've just bonded with for the mm-hmm. past two months is, it's amazing. Right. Um, now I know that this generation, you guys are are all tuned in. Well, everybody is these days, but with the internet and texting and all of that sort of thing. Obviously, I don't. You didn't have that on this trip, did you? No, we did not. But uh, it's too funny because when we do get it, yeah. you can see every kid at up on board, up on top side. Oh, when they there, get there, their, their phones are on them. They're in the way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My anyway. joke is that the cell phone is better than the radar. <laughs> Why? Because well, you, I I can be in my room and I have a radar repeater in my office, but without looking at it, I can see cadets out on deck with their cell phones. So I'm, uh, I know I'm at least 25 <laughs> miles from land. Okay. Oh, because they're all gathered on the deck and it's impacting the radar. No, it doesn't impact it. It's oh. just that the, the, the cellular signal's out there, oh. and so they're searching for it. Oh, okay. So they're looking for a cellular signal. We're worried about running into land on a bridge. So. Right. <laughs> um, on a serious note, though, we've all heard stories, Captain, about um, pirates and danger and things like that. And obviously, you're not you're not taking the Kennedy off the coast of Somalia or anything like that. But how about security on the trip during these or yeah during these trips? What, what are you doing with regard to that? Well, the ship uh, is compliant with the Marine Transportation Security Act, which is a, a federal law. It has to do with maritime security. Uh, we have an approved vessel security plan for, approved by the Coast Guard. Uh, our entire cadet watch system is part of that. Uh, without getting into any details in the, on the security plan, we, we comply with that. Now, we normally have an at-sea watch, and we're not too concerned in the open water. But this year, when we were off the coast of Haiti, yeah. which is probably not more pirates, is more maybe just out of desperation, there's some thievery or, and stuff like that. Right. We, we step up our watch system a little bit more. Much to the chagrin of the cadets, they have to stand additional right. watches. But, hey, that's, that's the life at, at sea. So uh, it's actually an awareness on their part for those cadets going Decker Engine that will find themselves off the coast of Somalia or the Horn of Africa. They'll, they will have seen some of that, you know, the processes you've, you've, you're doing. Sure, the security operations that take place in order to uh, prevent that sort of thing. Now, I understand that both of you guys are from Cape Cod, is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Taylor, where are you from? I'm from South Yarmouth. I went to Cape Cod Regional Tech. Okay, Katie? I'm from uh, Falmouth, but I went to Sturgis Charter Public School. Okay. Um, we've just got a couple minutes left. Um, Taylor, you want to share one final thought about C-Term? It just, it's a great experience, you know, because uh, for most of the students, this is their first time going away from home for this such a long period of time, and most of them have gone to a summer camp, but they all have their cell phones and whatnot, so it really forces students to um, create relationships with, you know, all the other students on campus, and it's just it's a great experience overall because they look, they learn a lot and it's um, an experience that sticks with everyone for a lifetime. So, right. Katie, um, it was really before before you leave, everyone tells you that C term will be the time of your life and you kind of shrug it off. But it really is the time of your life. You don't think about it while you're, while you're out there. Um, but coming back and just I miss all my friends already. I've been home for two days and right. I've already. Like, miss all of them. Um, we would sit out at sea sometimes um, at night and be think about how lucky we are to be able... How many schools do you get to go out to sea for two months with all your friends? Right. And it was... I've always been... Like, I want to go marine transportation, um, so the ocean's something that's always been really important to me, so it was just amazing to be out there for two months. Great. Captain, you're going again next year? <laughs> yes. All right. God willing. <laughs> All right. Well, and that's, my wife lets me. <laughs> that's the important thing. Um, 
Well, thanks very much for joining me today. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Thanks for coming in. Uh, today, I was joined by Captain Thomas Bushy, Vice President of Marine Operations at the Mass Maritime Academy, also Captain of the T.S. Kennedy. Also joining me were Taylor Inkley and Katie Rastalis. They are cadets at Mass Maritime. We've been discussing their experiences during the Academy's annual sea term, a 58-day long trip on the Kennedy. I'm Rob Woodard. This is Sunday Journal. This podcast is a presentation of Cape Cod Broadcasting, which is solely responsible for its content. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit us at capecodbroadcasting.com.